today we're going to be talking about how to use double integrals to find average value. In this particular problem, we've been asked to estimate it instead of calculating it exactly. We've been told that our region is defined from 0 to 4 for x by from 0 to 4 for y, so that means we've got a picture here that the region is enclosed by this rectangle here. x is bounded from 0 to 4, and y is bounded also from 0 to 4. We've also been told that m is equal to n, which is equal to 2, and what that means is that we're going to be dividing this region into two rectangles across for x by two rectangles across for y. In this particular case, our rectangles are squares because when we have a 4 by 4 and we're dividing it into two squares each way, that means we're going to have 2 by 2 squares. We've also been given this sketch, which is a sketch of level curves of this region, and we've been told to use this to find average value over this region here. So we're going to need this formula here for average value of the function. And the first thing we need to know is that this region here, this square, we're going to call that region R. And you'll notice here we've defined the region as 4 by 4, and we called that R. This here, A of R, means the area of that region. And you see also the R here underneath this double integral sign, which tells us that we're going to be finding the area over the top of this region. So the first thing we need to realize is that A of R, the area of the region, we already know is 16, right? Because our region is 4 units wide by 4 units tall. 4 times 4 is 16. So we're going to have 16 there that we're going to plug in. But since we don't have an equation for f of x, y, we're going to have to use an approximation. And you should always use midpoints if you can. If you can't use midpoints, you can always use you know, the upper right-hand corner, the upper left-hand corner, or the lower left-hand corner, whichever corner of each of these squares you want to. But if you have the option to use midpoints, usually midpoints are the most accurate estimation you can get. So we'll go ahead and pick the midpoint of each one of our squares. Remember that our region is 4 by 4. We've divided it into 2 squares by 2 squares. So we want to pick the middle of each square. So if we say the middle of this square is about here, the middle of this square is about here, this one may be about here, and the middle of this square right here. And what we can say is that this square here is at the point 1, 1, right? Because this here is 2, 2. This is right in the middle. This is 1, 1. We'll call this square at this coordinate point 1, 3. So that's at 1, 3. This one here is going to be at 3, 3. So this will be at 3, 3. And then this point here, which is at 3 and then 1. So 3, 1. And those are the four points we're going to use. Now, if you remember the average value function for two-dimensional space where we had an xy coordinate plane like this and we were looking to estimate the area under a curve and we would draw rectangles like this, we would call the width of each rectangle here, this width here, delta x, right? Well, now that we have three-dimensional space, we have to account for this change in terms of area. We have to account for the change in x, but also the change in y. That means multiplying x here by y. So the change in x is 2 from 0 to 2, from 2 to 4, etc. And then the change in y, which is 0 to 2 and 2 to 4. So the area of our square is 2 times 2, which is 4, as opposed to just the width of each rectangle, which maybe would have been 2 or 1. Now we talk about the area of the square being delta A, or the change in area, and that's 4, 2 times 2. So what we're going to do to estimate here f of xy times delta A, or change in area, we're going to multiply 4, which is delta A here, the change in area area by an estimate for each of these midpoints here. So we're going to say 4 times f of 1, 1 plus f of 1, 3 plus f of 3, 1 plus f of 3, 3. And we're going to plug in estimates for each of those. This will give us an estimate of the volume that's sitting here on top of this rectangle. So for f of 1, 1, we look at the point here, 1, 1, and we say that it's on this, approximately, on this level curve. And we said that that level curve has a value there of 20. Maybe the midpoint is a little off of the level curve and close to this level curve here that's 10. So maybe we'd call it, for example, 19 or something like that. 
Then we have 1, 3. We look at this point here. These two level curves, these straight lines, are at 0. This one's at 10. If it's halfway between, then maybe we can say that it's 5. Then we have the point three one. We look at this point here. It's right about on 10, but maybe just a little bit closer to 20. So we'll call that maybe 11. And then f of 3, 3, if we look over here at 3, 3, it's right about on 20, but maybe a little closer to 10. So why don't we call that again 19, something like that. And your level curves may be different, but that's how you get roughly an estimate. You look to see where the point is in between these curves. And get estimates and then if you simplify this here 19 plus 19 gives us 38 plus 11 gives us 49 plus 5 gives us 54 and when we multiply 54 by 4 we get 216. 216 is our estimate of this volume here for the double integral of f of x y times delta a so when we take the average value what we want to get here is 1 over 16 we already calculated the area of the region and this 216 value we got replaces the entire double integral so we multiply those together and of course we just get here 216 over 16 when we simplify that we can get 108 over 8, we can divide by 2 again and get 54 over 4, divide by 2 again and we get 27 over 2. And that's our rough estimate of the volume that's sitting on top of this 4 by 4 square underneath these level curves here. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.